All right. We are on our way to go try to catch some early ice walleyes. Uh, as you can see, it's fairly early in the air, still super nice out, and uh, just got everything unloaded out of the trucks. Keys is on his way. We're gonna head out, get out there early, try to get a spot set up, and uh, we'll see what happens. But I'm excited, I haven't caught too many walleyes yet this year, so it's still pretty early, we'll see how she goes. Missed the biggest walleye I've ever had on through the ice on that home. Yeah, I'm guessing that all these are fairly decent. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm almost worried we've got too many options now. Uh, and typically, you wouldn't know whether there was fish on a spot until prime time, you know? That hour before, hour after sunset. Start actually marking some suspects of walleyes, but we're gonna be using live right now, so we'll be able to get a real good sense of how much life is actually on these humps. And the nice thing about it is we're targeting smaller pieces of structure, smaller humps, so it doesn't take long, like I said, to find out if there's life out there or not. Starting a little group strategy, I don't know if you can see Kobe and Nick behind me. Um, I kind of mentioned earlier, we're targeting pretty small pieces of structure. Um, and so the nice thing is, you know, it's Kyle and I over here, Nick and Kobe over there. Uh, they got live, we got live. So, I mean, literally I'll go and identify with Lake Master the top of each piece of structure. Drill a hole on top and it does not take long on these small structures to do a full scan and see how much life is really up there. Typically, you're gonna have your windows. There's gonna be a lot more fish pulling out of deep water as the sun starts to drop. But a couple of good indicators on whether you should really stick out a spot or not is how much bait is in the area. Because essentially that's what drives you know fish movement. So if you're seeing more perch or maybe more smelt suspended up off bottom, even tulipies cruising, those are all good indicators that predator fish are gonna be around. So. You know, if we're over here and like, well, there's a couple of nice fish that kind of look like walleyes and they're over there going, yeah, but there's tons of bait and we're seeing what looks like walleyes too. Then we can kind of say, okay, it's worth spending more time over there. <laughs> Woohoo, copper. Look at this. Fresh, early ice meat. Hopper's excited too, but who wouldn't be? <laughs> Such a great time of year to come out and do this. They got a little bit more pep in their step, early ice. So, let's see, the hummingbird says sun sets at 4.23 p.m. It's 4.13 right now. So we got our first fish 10 minutes before sunset, and that means it's only gonna get better. That's a perfect cutter. Sit right there. Copper, keep an eye on her. <laughs> Another fish showed up on my screen with a lot of speed. <laughs> that sucker was hungry. That's a better one, I think. Moving down there. Hello, pretty girl. Flippity floppy, flippity floppy. Oh, you're greedy too, just like this fish. Look at that. That's a beautiful cutter. And she got her choke. Let's see. I have to get some pliers. Well, we're seeing some, excuse me, we're seeing some promising signs. Um, caught a fish not too long ago at, uh, what was it? 4.13, about 10 minutes before sunset. And then we went a little, lot, little while, a little low, where there wasn't a whole lot going on. But now, Nick's on live, Kobe's over there jigging a big rattle bait, 
and uh, I'm starting to mark a lot more fish and so are those guys so something to take note of here I'll box another one um, starting to see more fish like I said in the last 10 minutes or so I'm gonna head still good so that's a good sign and most of those fish have been kind of eh, not interested they look like they're on the move more than anything but I was just kind of joking this fish has got some speed to it it came up and no-brainered me so hopefully there's more where that come from for all of us. Another one right as I got back down. And that one was uh, suspended off bottom. Oh, look at her down there in that clear ice. Oh, she's got me a deucer. Oh, come here. Another beauty. Typically, you know, these fish are breaking off bottom. Well, literally, you saw I was just dropping right back down. That fish was probably three or four feet off bottom. And a lot of times I've seen when those fish are up off bottom like that, if they're walleyes, they're up there for a reason. They are hungry. So that one didn't waste any time eating. And now I do need another minnow head. You know, an interesting thing to note, which was an observation that Nick made on live imaging, these fish typically come out of deep water work their way up to these pieces of structure to feed. So they spend the day, in my mind, just kind of hanging out in deep water, maybe not moving real fast. But as that light drops, that's the ideal lighting for fish, for walleye in particular, their eyeballs are conducive for, for hunting in low light periods. So yeah, morning and evening are typical times when you're gonna go out and catch a walleye. So as the light drops, that's a signal for those walleyes to come out of deeper water and start hunting the tops of these structures where you're gonna find a lot more perch and those roaming schools of smelt will occasionally kinda of run racetrack around these structures as well. Like I said, as they do that, and, and Nick noticed this on the Mega Live imaging, there was fish literally coming up the break single file. That translates because we just had a little volley. I caught those two fish real quick and almost everybody here was graphing one at one time there for a second. So there was about a 10 minute window where they are marching up to break, single file, caught a couple fish. Now it's quieted down. So we're in a pretty good spot. We just gotta sit and wait for the next wave to come through. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, it's getting low light, like I said. Um, Humbert Helix has got a nice, Ice Helix has a nice feature here. Uh, which is jig charge which basically gives me a nice bright screen you can see that um, I think it's for eight or ten seconds so the back of this tumbler spoon is glow blue and I don't know if you can see that but that just obviously adds a little bit of attraction fish can see it from a longer distance you got this clear ice I could actually see that thing glowing down towards the bottom so you know I'm a firm believer of doing that every now and again, especially as we get in that low light period. And a lot of times what I used to do was pull out my cell phone light or fumble with some other flashlight. And it's kind of nice on the Helix to be able to just lean over and hit jig charge and you get 10 seconds of a bright screen that's bright enough to light up your glow spoon. <laughs> 